everybody to the Hearthstone Champion Show Winter Preliminaries. My name is Frodan, and joined by me is Jason Statham, also known as Robert Wing. How you doing? Good. I think that's the nicest thing you've ever called me, Dan. I really like this. Like that's right. I do have a lot of names for you, Robert. And I called you. I called yeah. you Drake earlier. If I get Jason Statham in return, <laughs> we're doing okay here. We're doing okay. At, at least by our, uh, our our alter egos, we're doing okay. Sure. Right now, we're definitely doing very well uh, because we have an awesome match coming up for you. It's Tim and Tim versus Rampage. Now, it's not the Rampage that you might be expecting. <laughs> When you hear that first name, it's a newcomer. But we also have Tim and Tim, who's in this pl position where last year he was a newcomer, and this year is like a validation period. Was it a fluke to get into the 128 round last year, or was it something that he was able to do because of his pure skill? And I definitely think he's leaning towards the latter. Right, no, I know uh, Tim and Tim very well. He was actually the Fireside Gathering champion last year. Uh, Dan, you may remember, that was where I was first unleashed upon the world. Yeah. Uh, my casting was... That's when Blizzard casted Unleash the Robert Wing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so sorry ever since, but it's <laughs> myself, you, and TJ, and we all got together. We're like, let's cast his Fireside mm -hmm. Gathering championship. We saw Puffin, actually, before he joined the Blizzard Hearthstone right. community team. And Tim and Tim was the winner, and, you know, he came out with that oil rogue, looked really fierce, uh, went into the round of 40, felt really good. Unfortunately, ran into Purple, who put the hurt on him, but... He's back now to really show that, you know, he can do it. Yeah, it's really cool to see that Blizzard offers alternative routes to get to the Hearthstone Championships. Last year, Tim and Tim won the event over Puffin, and, you know, Puffin got second. But he got a job at Blizzard, so I guess he won in different ways as well. It was in the fine print. We actually didn't it really was, want to point that was. out. But if you finish second, the ultimate Fireside punishment Championship, is to work with Robert. Is that correct? He actually sits next to me, and it's like he tries oh, to talk okay. to me, and I just like... Whole time. Whole time. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you know, Robert, uh, it's been a pleasure so far. Thank, thank you so much for just uh, being able to introduce yourself to the stream and talking with me here. But it's time to get to our next match. It's Tim and Tim versus Rampage. We're going to hop over to the desk and see what's in store next. Thank you very much, Dan and Rob. And yeah, I'm excited for this next match. Joining me on the desk is going to be Alex Raven Bagley and, of course, uh, Cora Songbird Georgiou. And uh, we're going to be bringing you this uh, Tim and Tim versus Rampage. And now, Cor, I'm going to come to you first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tim and Tim actually practices a lot with your team. I don't think he's an official member, but he practices a lot with some of the players on your team. What do you know about him? Uh, yeah, he's a great guy. He's what we call a, a friend of Vicious Syndicate. We have line chats. It's it's a it's a pretty cool group of people. Um, he was actually a guest star on my podcast at one point. He's just a great guy and a great player. And I'm really excited to see what he can do after winning the Fireside Championship last year. All right, well, Raven, um, is, you said this was your first time in America, and now you've gotten to see sort of the America's deck list and lineups now that they've been two matches in. Uh, has anything surprised you so far? Has anything sort of uh, taken you by surprise? Yeah, I mean, we're still quite early on, nothing too much yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys uh, bring out. And more importantly as well, some of the players who have got here mainly on just ladder points and see how they actually perform in the tournament format, because, it, you know, those two things are very, very different. And we see a player like Fibonacci, who's very known for playing Warrior, and it's like, you think, oh, okay, you know, really good Warrior player, really good ladder player, but how's he actually going to perform in a tournament setting itself? So really looking forward to that and seeing how a play like Rampage does. Yeah, and uh, Rampage is a player who... Uh, uh, if, if you are a frequent reader of the competitive Hearthstone server, you probably read a guide uh, by Rampage. He uh, he writes a lot of guides there. He wrote a Mech Mage guide a while back uh, and a mid-range Hunter guide. So uh, he's a guy that plays a lot of uh, Tier 1 ladder decks. So we'll see if that can translate over into tournament play. Uh, he earned all or most of his points uh, from ladder as well. So we can see on the screen Rampage, uh, Druid, Paladin, and Warlock. So those are pretty much the top three, the three ladder decks. Three hero ladder <laughs> yeah. decks. Yeah. And uh, Tim and Tim, on the other hand, uh, he is a uh, common rogue player, and he actually mm -hmm. was one of the only players to keep Undercity Valiant in his uh, I in his like decks. it. It's a style choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Raven, you an Undercity Valiant fan? Uh, I'm definitely a rogue fan. <laughs> I'm okay. not sure about that card specifically, okay. but I'm always excited to cast rogue games because, you know, there's the ongoing thing where any rogue players are normally, you know, people who love rogue actually are the ones who bring it to the, you know, to taunts regardless of how, how good people think it is yeah. overall. But uh, it's definitely going to be interesting how it performs as there are a few variations as well of rogue. So that's always fun to see. Yeah. You know, there are those slight differences between, say, oil and gadgets, and for example. Mm -hmm. And the rogue players are always the ones who think that rogue is basically a favorable matchup in, in pretty every, pretty much every match. Matchup. So it's always exciting to see those those diehard rogue players who just will always bring it and will always consider it to be one of the best decks, regardless of the meta. Yeah, I know I talked to a lot of rogue players, common rogue players, like uh, the Rat recently and, and Hyped in the past, even though he's sort of been you know MIA from the competitive scene for a while. And uh, you asked him, uh, how was the rogue matchup against Druid? Oh, 55-45. 
Uh, how's the rogue matchup against Warlocks? Oh, 55-45. They will always tell you 55-45 <laughs> in favor of the rogue, uh, no matter what. So Timmy Tim is a guy that's very confident in that in the Fireside Gathering Championship and in the round of 128 last year for the Americas Championship. Uh, he played that deck in both slots. But uh, both these players, or um, well, uh, Rampage has Warlock. Mm -hmm. We've seen a couple different variations of Warlock so far throughout the tournament. Um, Cora, what do you, what do you think is uh, the more the stronger deck, judging by the lineup so far, between Zoo and the Reno Handlock that we've seen? You know, it's really hard to say, and we even saw from Fibonacci in the first match, he had that Demon Handlock deck, which was you know, popular before, but just completely out of left field in this case. Yeah. We were all expecting, you know, maybe like 80% Zoo decks and, and some Reno handlocks thrown in there because it mm. was so strong on ladder um, in December and January. So I'm going to say Zoo is the most likely that we're going to see, but we've been proven wrong so far, and I think we could even be surprised again. Yeah, and Raven, there's a lot of differences. We were talking about this a lot over the course of the past couple of days uh, during rehearsals and practices and stuff. The difference between Zoo decks in the Americas and Europe... So talk to you a little bit about that. What are those? What are those, some of those common differences? Yeah. So um, one of the you know the, the key deck at the moment, at least in Europe, is the one that curves out at five with like mm -hmm. Lothair, Doom Guards, has yeah. Bran, you know, your peddlers, usual stuff. Whereas there's there's some other lists when you see it, you know, in Hanso Meccano, just kn knock around a little yeah, bit. Yeah. That comes out of nowhere <laughs> and potentially just win Fiori's you, you to death. So yeah. that's always a scary one, but it's definitely just the one that curves out at five. But I think yeah. the thing about Zoo, just in general, as a final point, is that although it's super common because it's deemed as the most powerful variant. Um, there is a point of not bringing that because everyone will be expecting it. Mm. Yeah, very true. But let's jump into the, the first match between not. Rampage and Timmy Tim. It is going to be uh, Druid versus Rogue. And uh, oh, Timmy Tim, he's, uh, he's growing in his Hearthstone career and he's also, you know, growing as man. Look at that beard. Yeah, and also just beginning the game with an emote. And the problem yeah. is when you just greet someone, there's always the thought where you receive that greeting like, mm -hmm. okay, are they just being nice? Or is this just already the or are beginning we of just a troll? Gonna have yeah. Problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see Tim and Tim starting on the coin. Uh, the coin is, you know, always a benefit to a lot of classes, rogue especially because of all the combo effects. Uh, even if you have nothing to play, coining out an Edwin uh, can be a viable option. Getting out that that four four, you know. Yeah, getting just a reasonable body in itself is really good. And it just starts to pressure. But looking at the rest of the cards, he's very he's got, got some very reactive stuff. He's got the sap, the uh, you know, the fan of knives, mm -hmm. the deadly poison, just a lot of stuff to deal with the druid and. The Rampage doesn't really have the ramp at the moment. Yeah, Tim and Tim has a very reactive hand. No minion. Well, he did just pick up the Tomb Pillager. But other than that, uh, Edwin, usually a later game card, like to combo it with some uh, early spells. Rampage's hand is is heavy. I mean, when you have to hero power turn two and turn three as a druid, I, we like to joke you're not a very good druid player. But usually, it, <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, it's, it's, it's just <laughs> it's just unlucky at this point. And yeah. he's got the four drops. He's got a nice curve once he get, gets a little bit higher. But Tim and Tim might just be able to run away with it a little bit up until then. Yeah. So Tim and Tim's actually going, you know, pretty all in with this Edwin Van Cleef, uh, bringing it up to, well, not a 6-6. Six, six. Okay, not quite as Not quite Savit-style Edwin yeah, yeah. Van Cleef, <laughs> but a reminiscence. Yeah, of course. but Rampage has to be happy about this because this actually gives him something to play because otherwise he would have keepered face or hero power mm -hmm. pass, so he's happy that he has something to silence. Yeah, and on the side of Tim, Tim it, the reason for that Van Cleef really was if he wasn't yeah. going to play it, like that was a good turn for him, right? Mm -hmm. So if he wasn't going to play it then, it would become like much later on because he had the Tomb Pillager for turn four, and then next turn he'll gain potentially the coin if it's dealt with uh, this turn on the Druid side. So he's got a lot of follow-up, and getting a body like the Tomb Pillager on board is going to be really strong because he has cards like Sap. So if Druid of the Claw came mm -hmm. out, he could just Sap, forget about it for a turn, and just push for more damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, another card that we haven't really talked about much is the Ancient of War in Rampage's Druid deck. Now, this is a card that a lot of players uh, in, in you know, January, into December sort of yeah. cut from their this lineups, uh, running the more uh, faster, aggressive with double Living Roots, double Azure Drake. Uh, cool. What do you think of the, the Ancient of War right now uh, in Druid uh, in the current meta? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. A lot of it we saw just like one-offs, but there's even players that have took all, all together just to put the two of Ancient of War in. Yeah. It's just reactive of, of, you know, decks like Secret Paladin yeah. and Zoo. The second you put up a big wall, it's actually quite difficult to deal with, especially for Zoo. If they don't have like the silence, yeah. they just try and ignore it. To get through 10 health is normally like how you beat a deck like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think I really like at least one Ancient of War. I know we've seen some Druid decks with two. That might seem a little bit like overkill, but when you have as much ramp as they do, it's not, you know, unlikely that you're going to get something out on turn five and then a follow-up later on. So it's really good against the aggro lists. Unfortunately, against Rogue, not quite so good. The Rogues do have Sap. We've seen one plate already, so it will be relatively safe. Yeah, and this is actually, you know, Tim has to be feeling pretty good about his play. He got the coin uh, from the Tomb Pillager, and he drew Dr. Boom right off the top, but... Uh, it is met with a, a BGH from uh, from Rampage, and um, one of the players, or a couple of players that have, you know, sort of been on the forefront of Druid innovating, not innovating, innovating, uh -huh. um, uh, have been Neo Ability uh, on the NA ladder, and, uh, and of course, uh, Dengzu, and both of them have been experimenting with Ancient of Wars, but Neo Ability has already dropped to the lower bracket so far in this tournament, oh, so wow. uh, if that's any indication, we'll have to see what kind of deck he's running later <laughs> on, but um, that's a, a lot of where the the North American influences on Druid decks. Yeah, and looking at this hand here for Rampage, the, the hand looks great when you look at it sort of in a vacuum, mm -hmm. but the problem he's got is Rogue is very good at just dealing with, you know, like, I'm going to drop a minion, yeah. like, next turn. Okay, so I'll deal with your minion, and then just keep building off that and really gain tempo. And already, although Tim Tim's actually just lacking a bit of card draw and maybe wants to see a sprint, potentially, even the Thanos going down is just, okay, it's going to cycle for one, draw another card next turn, and he has prep to be able to do some r really crazy things. So it's going to be a little bit rough at Rampage, I think, at this moment to try and just, you know, build a big enough board. Yeah, and Rampage just, he can't build a big enough board at this point. If he overextends, Tim and Tim has that Tinker's Sharp Sword Oil, he has the prep, and he's got the Blade Flurry. He has just the potential to clear that board, and he just picked up the Sprint and the Violent Teacher. I mean, those are so difficult for the Druid to deal with without a swipe, which we don't see in Rampage's hand. Yeah, and this Druid of the Claw just won't stay on the board. That that's feels the, bad. That's the second sap straight away, and it's just, yeah. it feels so bad for the Druid because that's five mana. That's like a huge portion of your turn. It gets dealt with. The Rogue's like, oh, I'll just do this two mana spell and just, you know, back in your hand, mm -hmm. play it again. Especially it, with the Teacher, it's such yeah. a significant tempo push. And then the Druid just physically cannot get a minion to stick, which I, now he's got the Ancient of War. We know we've seen both saps, but the Rogue still has such big AoE potential. You never quite feel safe. Yeah. The thing about big blade flurry turns is not only are they cleaning minions off the board, but usually they're also pushing a lot of face damage. Um, so Rogue is still sort of on a clock against Druid, just yeah. because a lot of times they have to swing into stuff to clear the board. Um, and so they do get in combo range against Druid occasionally. So uh, as Cord mentioned, the sprint's going to be a huge deal as we move forward. And as you can see there, because it, it gives them that longevity and uh, the extra resources to be able to uh, kill Rampage before he gets into combo range. Yeah, and if you look at that final draw as well, the Deadly Poison with the oil and having Blade Flurry Light, mm -hmm. that's a lot of damage next turn, potentially. So, you know, all the answers, even cards like Batstab into S7 Agent to help, you know, just break this Ancient mm -hmm. of War down to open up that huge Flurry mm -hmm. turn and, pro you know, potentially just end the game there and then. Yeah. Yeah, Timmy's going to have to extend some resources into it. May not feel the best. You don't want to Blade Flurry, you know, before you actually get an attack on the first charge, but he definitely has a lot of versatile ways to clear off this Ancient of War. I'm ready to yeah, it's still gaining those tokens as well because, you know, this normally yeah, doesn't feel too great versus Druid because you expect the swipe and it's like, okay, all these tokens are gone. But we can see that there is no swipe and even if he had one, that's, again, that's four of his mana and for Druid, like having to spend four mana to clear one ones yeah. when you need, you know, a lot of your minions are like seven mana drops actually are the most impactful on the game at the time. So it's going to be really rough. Now, we actually saw Timmy ran one of his uh, apprentices into the Ancient of War before Deadly Poisoning. Uh, maybe he was gonna, gonna clear with the Violet Teacher and the weapon. I mean, what do you think about that? You think maybe just a small misplay and then change the course of the turn, he decided not to clear off the Ancient, or maybe he's got a plan for next turn. Yeah, it's a tough one. Maybe it's just a clearance space. It's going to be really difficult when you're in, under this much pressure. It's mm -hmm. sort of like, it's really rough to think, right, okay, this is my plan. And then you start to do it and then go, mm, okay, maybe not. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm actually okay. And we can see that with just a 5-5 five, five on the board, you're not really too afraid of a combo, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what? I can take this damage because I have so much potential next turn to burst. If Rampage had a swipe right now, all of Timmy's dreams would just be yeah. just shattered immediately. Yeah. He, d he did use one swipe earlier, though, correct? He to found the Tomb Pillager, if I remember correctly. Is that how he killed it? I think so. The Tomb Pillager <laughs> died somehow. Man, that <laughs> yeah. feels we're like all, a long yeah, time we're already. On a tangent, but, uh, so, rogue, rogue, rogue. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, so, wait a minute. <laughs> um, this, is, this is just crazy. Yeah. He, he did. Oh, wow. So, is this a full clear? Yep. yep. Six. So, not oh, quite straight so on to lethal, but definitely presenting a lot of damage. And mm -hmm. even the card like the Farseer. 
all it's doing is pushing himself further out of range of the Druid doing something silly with like, you know, combo with double Savage Roar with an Innovate or something like that. Yeah. It just really just, you know, keeps him steady and make that much less likely to, for just combo to be an mm -hmm. issue combined with the board clear. So mm -hmm. Rampage under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, he's had so many cards in hand this whole time and trying to play down that Druid of the Claw twice before it actually sticks. Timmy's hand may not have been the biggest, but his minions were so effective and his spells were so efficient in removing Rampage's cards that he just couldn't get anything to stick. He's still got a huge hand and he has combo, but Timmy is in such a safe range and Rampage is just going to go ahead and concede. Yeah, that's a, a pretty quick first match. And you know, Rogue is, is uh, touted as one of those decks that's a little bit inconsistent. You know, mm -hmm. imagine if he had drawn any other card in his deck besides Sprint yeah. at that moment. Oh, yeah. Uh, it would have been a completely different game, but uh, it's not often where you see a Druid in a situation where they can't play Ancient of Lores. You know, he, he drew the Ancient of Lore early on, one of the strongest cards uh, in Druid, and he just wasn't able to play it because he didn't have the time. He said he mm -hmm. both of his Druid, or his single Druid of the Claw <laughs> got sapped multiple times. Claw. Such bullying. Yeah, yeah, I think one of the uh, major points in that specific matchup was mm -hmm. after the first sap, he couldn't follow up with replaying it. Mm -hmm. He actually played the Keeper of the Grove to kill off the 3-2 yep. SI7 yeah. agent. And the problem is, like, that feels good to just remove a minion off the board, but it's a 2-4 versus, you know, like, yeah. versus a Druid of the Claw taunt again. So I think that just, like, slight delay. Mm -hmm. And then he had to play it next turn with, I think, Hero Power. Mm -hmm. So, like, that just slight delay made it a little bit too difficult to claw back into the yeah. game. Yeah, Timmy was always just slightly ahead, and then Rampage just... he had to take turns off to clear off the minions and then at that point without the second swipe without the azure drake to really make a push back for the board it just wasn't going to happen yeah so that's a, a little bit of a, a frustrating game for a druid player when you feel like you're helpless you can't do anything and uh i've talked to a lot of people that know rampage and that played against him they said he's a very emotional player mm -hmm. that uh, when he wins he gets super pumped but when he loses um he has tendencies to tilt he has tendencies to you know um get emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, so both of you are experienced tournament players, as am I. Of course. But I, I want to get your us expertise. Next season, DJ. When you're playing a, a deck like Druid, where it's one of the most consistent decks, it's one of the strongest decks in the meta, and you, you have such a defeating loss early on, how does that play into your psyche going in to the next, you know, three, four games. Yeah, I think it's really important that you need to, especially the first game, you know, in the Conquest format, you pretty much just pick a deck you want to play. Mm -hmm. There's not really uh, a lot of heavy thought gone into the first pick because yeah. once the classes start getting knocked down, it's more important. But, um, but yeah, I think you just have to be able to put it behind you and just be like, that was a rough game. He yeah. had double sap for my Druid of the Claw, mm -hmm. which is pre pretty bad, as well as having the teacher out, like you said, during the yeah. game. Like, getting the teacher into sap was huge. And you know what? Rogue, Rogue does that. You know, sap is a card. So yeah. it's important. <laughs> but as you said, if, if, if it's, like, super emotional, it's a double-edged sword. So yeah. it either, you know, you really mm -hmm. get, like, hyped for it and then continue to play really well, or you can actually just be like, oh, that, that was a joke, right? So, right. right, okay, queue in next game and just go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can have a huge impact, you know, mm -hmm. as a player. No, I mean, it's it's certainly a benefit to be invested in the game. You want to be excited about it, and you want to have, you know, things riding on this game. But at the same time, you need to sort of distance yourself from it. Because you have another two games in the set, you need to win three games. And he's only down by one, and then even if you do lose the match, you have an entire lower bracket to play through. So you cannot let this get you down this early on in the day. Actually, this is a lower bracket match. This is a lower bracket. So oh. this is, this is uh, the first elimination match that we are broadcasting oh, today. Oh, so he might be... Yeah. A little bit more upset than we were riding on. So uh, Rampage, um, both of these players uh, lost in their first round, mm -hmm. so they okay. moved down to the lower bracket. Uh, so that also can you know play into your emotions where you fall into the loser's bracket early on. You have to win so many matches to make your way back up. It's a tough thing to do. Yeah, it's really difficult. And, and the fact that this this isn't just any tournament, right? You know, like the scale and potential as a player to go far in, in a tournament like this is huge. And to yeah. be in the, lose, uh, the lower bracket mm -hmm. this early and then to, you know, like lose the first game like so hard, like let's be honest, it was a bit rough. Uh, it must be really bad as well, especially if he's, you know, known, as you say, as an emotional player. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting whether he can just pull it together, clear his mind out mm -hmm. and just be like, right, let's, let's just do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's daunting to have all these matches ahead of you and then to go down one game it's not the end of the world we've seen you know complete reverse sweeps uh, so yeah. it's not impossible but it's definitely it's definitely difficult and i mean both players might be even slightly tilted just from their first loss so coming into this they're already at a disadvantage and the yeah. thing as well is you've got to be honest you know, Rogue's obviously slightly favored versus everything. Yeah, so, 55, you know, you, 45, you, you, you lost a slightly favored matchup, so he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You it, can't play Rogue three times. Druid is even one of those ones that Rogue players will say, oh, yeah, 60 40. Oh. Yeah. That, going, going crazy out on a limb with there. the percentages. It's a little bit of a bold <laughs> claim. Um, but we are moments away from jumping into the next match. Um, we can take a look at the remaining decks for both players. 
Uh, Tim and Tim. Oh, they, as soon as I said that, they just disappeared. Vanished. Yeah. Magic. Uh, I believe it was Paladin and Warrior. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That means we're jumping to the next match. So that's actually a good sign. Uh, Rampage going with the Druid once again. And uh, Tim and Tim's heading over to the Warrior. And it seems to be Patron. And uh, Raven, I I've got you on the Control Warrior hype train. Yep. But uh, you had a little bit of a rough experience playing Control Warrior last night. So w what's your thoughts on yeah, Patron Warrior? Yeah, after you told me how good the deck list was you gave me, and then I just lost every game, your instant was, oh, it, it must be you. It's your fault. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, which, you know, thanks for that. Thanks for that ego boost. But um, the, the Patron Warrior is a deck I really like, and I kind of like it a bit more post-nerf. Um, just feels a bit more reasonable, but um, it's really good versus Druid, I think. Like, Druid is known for struggling to deal with multiple minions on board effectively, mm -hmm. and especially when they're Patron, it really just relies on things like Wrath to be able to just remove the three health Patron off the board and try and deal with it from there. Uh, and even the Frothing Berserkers, like, uh, as we can see, there's two there for Tim Tim, just dropping them on three. It's like, you're not doing anything fancy with these guys. Drop it on three, the Druid has to respond because mm -hmm. it's such a potential threat. So I, th I think it's a really good matchup for the warrior but druid is a class that can just do do fun things and uh, when this card's like you know that shredder with innovating coin you know maybe we'll see something a little bit crazy early on probably a bit too much investment but yeah i think the the patron warrior is going to be feeling pretty good here yeah. yeah patron is definitely i would say slightly favored in this matchup if they get the perfect hand it can be such a blowout so quickly but rampage does have some nice ramp in hand he's got the coin innervate shredder but after that you know, he might have to save it to coin Innervate into one of the Ancient Allures to draw some cards to get a more reasonable curve. And, uh... Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a tough decision deciding whether to coin mm -hmm. Innervate, but that, that is actually uh, Rampage is having some technical issues. Yeah, so. it looks like uh, we're going to be taking a little bit of time in between mm -hmm. the matches. Yeah, it uh, gives us more time to talk about... <laughs> Patron no. Warrior! <laughs> Don't Patron go Warrior there. and Raven's okay. losing streak with Control Warrior. <laughs> okay, uh, Let, let's not, let's not. But talking more about the actual matchup. Yeah, yeah, sure, um, sure, One sure. of the cards we didn't see in the opening hand for the Warrior was Death Spite, which yeah. is actually probably the, the key most card pivotal against card Druid. In the matchup. Like it's, it, in, in general, Death Spite's super important, mm -hmm. but against Druid specifically, you need to be able to clear off those big minions, because if there's a Druid of Claw down mm -hmm. that you can't actually remove, then that's going to do pretty well versus Patrons, and it's going to soak up a lot of damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did see the Fiery War Axe in the Patron Hand, which is really nice against Darnassus Aspirin, if you ever see it. Really good against the Shredder that we did see in Rampage's Hand. Um, but unfortunately, if they're going to have some technical difficulties and have to re-mulligan, then uh, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't think either player had a hand that was above and beyond. No, they were yeah, they were the yeah. best hands. Uh, but we'll see with that. Uh, uh, but also, uh, Patron Warrior is a deck where, uh, against Druid especially, is where if you have Despite, Inner Rage, and Patron in your hand, even though you don't have to play until turn four, you keep it. Because you mentioned, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they cannot <laughs> deal with a board full of four Patrons on turn five unless they have ridiculous amounts of removal and Innervate. Like a mm -hmm. keeper one, Innervate one. And, and even then, you might the be other. left with a 3-2 a that they can just, eh, Cruel Taskmaster, yeah. eh, Whirlwind, eh, yeah. okay, now deal with this. And the Druid just can't do it. They don't have any form of, of mass AoE like Rogue, like mm. uh, Warlocks, unfortunately. Yeah. It kind of interests as well that just looking at the bans and the lineups uh, like we were about to go into earlier, um, it's the second time the Shaman's been banned in, you know, that we've seen on stream so far. We saw it banned against Chaki, mm -hmm. and it's just been removed again. Uh, so the Timmy Tim's removed that, obviously, you have to just presume it's going to be an aggressive mm -hmm. Shaman deck. Yeah. And lining up against decks like Rogue and Druid is definitely pretty rough. But even with the Warrior, it seems okay. Because seem, leaving open Druid, Paladin, Warlock always feels a little bit rough. Because yeah. it's just the probably the three yeah. top or most consistent decks at the moment. Yeah. It's just an interesting ban pick there. Um, but, yeah, Tim, uh, we talked about this the other day with uh, Aggro Shaman versus Warriors. Mm -hmm. Um and Control Warrior is the biggest one, but you know, a lot of people are just banning Shaman because Shaman can do some things that are just absolutely nuts. And you are a proponent of saying that even the Aggro Shaman is slightly favored versus the Control Warrior. Versus Control Warrior. Yeah, Patron's a little bit different story because a lot of times they have a little bit more early mm -hmm. removal. And you look at Control Warrior and you say, oh, they're chock full of early removal. Yeah. Then you're like, how does a Patron Warrior deal with the or how does a control warrior deal with a totem golem? If they don't get a, a death spite, fire yeah. war axe, yeah. cruel taskmaster, they can just be left out in the dust. And you think, oh, you know, Justicar, you got shield maiden. If you can make it to the late game, you have enough health gain that you, you can, you know, stall out the game. But if the aggro shaman gets, you know, tunnel trog, uh, feral spirits, coin, and then can just blow it out and the warrior yeah. doesn't have fiery war axe, it can be just such a fast game that before the warrior even has a chance to react, mm -hmm. the shaman's already won. 
Yeah. yeah, and also Doomhammer's a pretty reasonable card. Mm, that, yeah. that does some uh, things, I, I suppose. Like it. It, it can do some it's damage, okay. I guess. So that's yeah. a, normally a pretty good pickup and mm. a really good seat. It's seen uh, quite a lot of Harrisons as well in some decks. Yeah, it so seems far, like a lot so. of people are attacking Harrison. Yeah, it's just expecting all the, especially when you can pick four classes. Mm -hmm. The odds on like Paladin, Warrior being yeah. picked is two of, the, two of the top decks at the moment. And then obviously the Shaman we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of. So. Oh, yeah, well, definitely so, a safe tack. I was talking to a couple of players um, in regards to their plans coming in and. Uh, usually there's two, you know, schools of thought. Uh, there's the uh, deck lineup where you ban your opponent if they have Warrior, and there's a deck lineup where uh, if your opponent has Druid, you ban that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, because the Druid mirror matchup is inherently weaker when you tech in Harrison Jones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so those are the matchups where you ban your opponent's Druid because you're trying to target their Warrior. So uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of Harrison Jones is because of the ban. You can ban out Druid to make the mirror matchup Eliminate the mirror matchup. Mm -hmm. What well, if they still don't have... play Warrior or Druid in the lineup? Oh, Do you, are you just stuck? Do you just forever just sit on the ban yeah. phase and be like, ah. I did not mm -hmm. prepare no, for this? That's actually a good <laughs> thing because then you can just ban whatever you want. Yeah, close your eyes and be yeah. like, Yeah, don't play ban Mage. Rule fine. Yeah. There's a lot of players that hate playing against Mage. Yeah, I'm one of those players, hate actually. It. Yeah, I'm it's one the of those worst. players. Yeah, it's Tim, awful. Tim, Tim is a player that apparently hates playing against Shaman, even though he might have decks that do pretty well against some Shaman decks. He maybe just doesn't know. Um, yeah. So uh, that's a, a, a big thing to look at when considering bands and considering tech choices. Usually they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing to look at is, you know, how many weapon classes are there actually going to be? Realistically yeah. speaking, yeah. It's a lot of paladins, a lot of rogues. Tons of paladins. Uh, there was a lot of warriors as well, patron and control. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a, another thing to look at. Shamans with Doomhammer as well. If you can draw six cards with a Harrison and then simultaneously crush the Shaman Spirit because they've spent five mana on Doomhammer and then are overloaded the next turn. Mm -hmm. That feels so good. Yeah. It's, it's dirty, but it feels good. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a valid tactic, crushing someone's spirits mm -hmm. in Hearthstone. That's uh, <laughs> definitely what you want to do. It's one of those assert dominance, like coin hero powers, hunter turn one. Ooh, uh, yeah. you know, there's always tactics to Ballsy. do that, so it sometimes can be worth mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, while we're figuring out the issues with the Rampage versus Tim and Tim match, we have our neighborhood friendly Dan waiting with some updates. Thank you very much, TJ and crew, and apologies for leaving you guys hanging there for a while. So in order to maximize the time efficiently, let's go ahead and update you guys on some of the information about what's happening. We do have an update on the Tides of Time versus Strife Crow match, an unfortunate clash between teammates and friends and roommates so early. And we are sad to announce that one player did have to lose, and uh, Tides of Time did end up going through the match, winning 3-1, to one, sending Strife Crow to the loser's bracket very early on. However, Strife Crow can still battle through, and Tides, he's told me that he's brought some interesting stuff, so looking forward to see if he can continue to make his run. Meanwhile, we do have one player that's guaranteed into the winner's round four. That's right, we're advancing pretty quickly, and it is Chess Dude, the guy that Kevin brought up in the recent series as his player to watch out for, so looks like at least one caster's predictions are spot on so far. Uh, meanwhile, we do have other couple of updates as well. Uh, we do have Just Saiyan from Temple Storm. He is standing strong, moving on to the bracket Fibonacci, a player that we watched in the first round, did end up winning his second game and move on to round number three as well. Just a quick bra uh, browse through. Uh, we're just going to be following a lot of people throughout the day. Dart also moved on to the next round. He's a player that's been around the Southern California area, casting some events and also uh, making some Reddit memes once in a while. Definitely a player to look out for as well. So uh, overall, we've been checking in. So make sure to follow along the brackets with us on the link that you see or type exclamation bracket in the chat to follow along with us. Also make sure to hashtag HTC and tell us if you're enjoying it and tell us what you're doing along with us by showing us some pictures as well. I'm Frodan and we're gonna hop over to TJ and see if we're ready for our next game. Thank you very much, Dan. I really like that sweater on Dan. It's a nice sweater. <laughs> it, is a, it is a really nice sweater. He's got such style. Yeah. Is uh, there anything he can't pull off? That's I my question. The, I need to, I need to mm, ask him some, get some tips. We the, haven't seen overalls. Yeah. So maybe, maybe one day. That's a challenge for Dan for next week. We, we just <laughs> saw him walk by the stage smirking, so uh, <laughs> He's that's confident. a good one. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're uh, still trying to resolve the issues uh, between uh, the match between Tim and Tim uh, and Rampage. So hopefully we'll jump into that match soon. Uh, but I'd like to talk with you guys a little bit about some of the other matchups mm -hmm. uh, that have been going on. We heard uh, Tides of Time uh, went through over Strifegro, knocked Strifegro down to, to the lowest bracket. 
Uh, so Raven, what do you what do you think of that the two the two Cloud Nine boys uh, duking it out is that an unfortunate thing or well, is that something that th you'd like to see? Yeah, it's it's definitely a rough matchup and definitely you know even more so so early in the tournament mm -hmm. they those guys didn't really want to meet each other at all or at least till much later. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a rough one and it's nothing you ever never want to knock out a teammate, right? That's yeah. it never feels good. But at least one of them definitely went through. Mm -hmm. That's the good way to look at it. But it would have been a really good game and I, I kind of like I've casted Tide recently. And I definitely like his deck building. He, he, he does a lot of what seems like fairly standard decks and archetypes, mm -hmm. but actually just drops in like, you know, certain tech choices that are Little very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Cor, did any of the match updates uh, stand out to you that Dan said? No, any players that uh, we've seen that dropped out or moved mm -hmm. on that surprised you or that you were happy about? Um, I mean, pretty standard so far. I am really excited to see Tides of Time back and looking stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. Tides and Strife are two of the guys that just, you know, when I came into the scene were just the two superpowers, like the guys that you would always see at the top of their game. And Tides having taken a little bit of a break, it's really nice to see him come back. And you never want to knock out a teammate, but he's probably feeling pretty good that he's moving on in such an important tournament. And I know I actually saw, was it Zelay that dropped out yeah. thus far? That is surprising to me. Um, I mean, he's a great player as well. Yeah, uh, definitely surprised. Rising. Uh, but Ty, looks like Tides has his passion back. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll check it in on his story throughout the day. But uh, we actually are going to uh, postpone the match for uh, Tim and Tim versus Rampage. Uh, we are going to move to a different match. It's going to be Muzzy uh, versus Kuglorin. Okay. Um, so uh, we are going to go to a quick break before that happens. Uh, so don't go anywhere, guys. More Hearthstone Championship Tour action 